Okay, it's Monday, April 4th, 2022. I'm going to call the selectmen's meeting to order first order of business to move the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any public comment? I have none. Okay. Hearing none. First, next order of business is uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, Motion to approve is written. Second. Um, okay, I'll take the second as advisory. Page two. Um, after action items. The sentence that is selecting where we provided to select them with NHMA webinar materials from a webinar that he attended and suggests the other selectmen look at it. Selectman Pike mentioned that he uh -huh. yeah. watched the recorded webinar. Good catch. Okay, one, two, three, four, five lines further down, or four lines. We've actually become a super citizen because it's your vote through one of the three of wow. those. <laughs> the other hands of the public. That gives you extraordinary power over what questions are, questions are asked. <clears throat> that would, I had R there and the computer changed it to ISM. Well, that's where we shouldn't use computers. Okay. <laughs> it also gives you the opportunity to say no. Selectman always said it was a lack of clarity in a sense that he thinks bothered people the most, so is what should be left out. The last line on that page, earlier in the meeting, the selectmen signed a letter to offer NHEC a partnership, get rid of with the, and add to provide broadband here in Tuckenborough. So I enjoy a motion to amend the motion to accept. I'll recant my initial motion and I will uh, <laughs> make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, I forgot to ask the Okay. Okay. Moving on to our appointments. First appointment is the uh, transfer station. So I have to have meetings in the afternoon, I have time to read the minutes. <laughs> Good idea, right? Oh, no, stop. No. You have two minutes. Solid waste and CD are both up. 
So you sent us a memo. Did you guys get the memo from Chris? About the way so? Yes. So his suggestion, I guess I'll read the whole memo so it's in the record. The following correspondence is, an offer to the board of select, is to offer the Board of Selectmen the suggestion, possible solution of the overwhelming cost of properly disposing of our waste oil. The last service request, <coughs> Clean Harbors Environmental Services, cost <coughs> the town just under $1,400, $1,383.75 to pump out 300 gallons of waste oil. My suggestion to the board is to begin to charge residents $1.25 a quart, or $5 per gallon <coughs> of waste oil. This will offset the cost of the oil recovery as well as any small costs increased due to inflation. So, Five dollars a gallon. I mean, I can't do the math in my head on a dollar and a quarter. But five dollars a gallon will generate fifteen hundred dollars before you have a pump out. Do we charge for tires? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's not a lot different. No. So waste product generator. Yeah, I mean, we charge for tires. We charge for TVs. We charge for um, refrigerators <coughs> and air conditioners. And it's only to recover the cost, cost to, right. um, to recycle them because we have to pay to get rid of them. Right. So, what do you think there, gentlemen? <coughs> How long did it take us to accumulate those 300 gallons? A rough idea. It doesn't take long. People are bringing in 10, 15 gallons at a whack. That really doesn't answer my question. It's How long did it take to get those 300? Or was it partially full when you took over? No, no, we, we, we can fill that in four weeks, three weeks. Yeah, this isn't the first time we've done No, I, I, I it. Was a recent time. Uh, we forgot to it pumped out three times. That's 300 gallons of pop. Yep. Yeah. The last time it was um, 13 something. It was, it was 75, 75, and then 1300. So it went up, it jumped up. So the discussion we had previous to this, Bob, was why can't we use the waste oil for some other purposes? Maybe the part of the shop with it or whatever. The problem with that is that the waste oil that we're getting is contaminated. So there's no way we can, well, we're not big enough to afford a filtering system, even if we wanted to. And there's no burner system that will just take antifreeze and everything else that goes with it and run it through to create heat. So it's, Pretty much useless oil. <coughs> Other stuff. Do all do our surrounding towns? Do they all take waste oil? Are we unique? I don't know that we are. Are we? I know, no, I know that Wolfboro takes it. Um, they have they have some form of a friends or there. I'm not sure how they filter. Mm -hmm. um, Ed burns it in his place, um, but he's he takes oil from well, the he's cars. Not taking he, waste oil from people that are changing their oil. Well, he's he's, he's, he's the using oil, oil, oil he changes. Change um, himself. But you know, <coughs> what it's like is that we've got oil coming in from everywhere, and people say it's clean, but but when we get to the test results, it's not clean. Yeah, there's always antifreeze. And, and, you know, it sells out. It doesn't necessarily <coughs> mean malicious. It could be a leak in the block. It could be right. any number of things. 
Is there a low yeah, point I drain? Saw, I, I'm sorry. Is there a low point drain at the bottom? <coughs> there is. That's where you tap off the antifreeze. The antifreeze will settle to the bottom. Um, people that buy oil and change their oil in their cars, they usually can take it back to where they bought it from, the dirty oil, or the receipt. I know it's cumbersome. But we've given people that suggestion. We've told them you can take it to Walmart, you can take it to Napa, you can take it to Walmart accepts oil. And the, we, we haven't had any issue with anybody, you know, over the age of, uh, under the age of 40. I guess where I'm going is, <laughs> with this question is, is, should we even be in the business of accepting waste oil? Well, the, the theory is that we'd rather have it at the transit station <coughs> under control as opposed to on somebody's driveway. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm abashed at the quantity. Oh. I mean, you had 2,500 people. Let's say at the outside, you got 5,000 cars, and I don't think there are 5,000 registrations in Tuckmore, but we could find out. Mm -hmm. That still doesn't generate this much oil usage. It's crazy. <laughs> so I, I'm wondering how much of this oil is coming from out of town because we don't charge anything. You have people that have heavy equipment, dump trucks, that take 20 gallons of a whack, maybe 20 quarts. Thanks. <laughs> um, large quantities of oil, more than kind uh, of diesel yeah, pickups take that, quite a bit. I mean, even if you take all 12. the log trucks and dump trucks in town, 300 gallons of oil is quite a, quite a jag, and he's saying he can fill it three or four times a year, so you're <laughs> talking, let's say you're talking a thousand gallons of oil, and the average car out here is taking a gallon and a half. So. Even the big trucks are not taken, and, uh, and the excavators don't take that much oil anyway because they're all, it's a small engine running a big hydraulic pump. Well, right now we don't have the ability to, to burn even clean waste oil. So that's, we, we can't do anything with it but pump it away, mm -hmm. give it some, have it all the way. We're, we're stuck with that until another town meeting, and then even after that if we decided to do something. So we can't. Think too far ahead at this point. He's got a problem on his hands. Right. And if, if we think that charging to get rid of it is going to solve that problem, or at least it's a stopgap measure. I think we should do it. So I'm going to make the motion that we accept the uh, proposal to charge 125. Uh, excuse me, a dollar twenty-five per quart or five dollars per gallon of waste oil to dispose of it at the transfer station. I'll second to continue the discussion. <clears throat> um, I, 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 I want to be consistent with uh, what other towns are doing. Mm -hmm. That's all. Um, you know, I don't like adding fees, but clearly we have a problem that we need to address. Um, if this is consistent with what our other towns around us are doing, then I have no problem moving forward with it. Uh, I just don't want to be the only town that charges for waste oil. I, I think it, it's not a profit <laughs> center, so we're not looking to make a profit at it. And, and if you think of it holistically, most of the residents in town probably have some garage change to oil. They're not doing it themselves. Right. So those folks are subsidizing the people that are taking oil to the transfer station. So I, that would drive my vote a little bit. So then yeah. those the garages that, that are in town are either going to pay somebody to haul their oil away or if they take it up to the recycling center, um, they're going to pay either way. And it's just going to get passed on to the taxpayer one way or the other. Customer in that case, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully or customer. Take the taxpayer out of the Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one way or the other. <laughs> I think the people are going to pay because it's going to be simple. They won't get rid of it. They just and they took it back to where they bought it from, it's free. Right. It's just a trip wherever. Right. Right. So they remember the next time you go in that direction to bring it with you. Right. So I don't think we're holding anybody hostage right. by um, by charging a fee. Correct. So 
So you're ready to vote. Call for vote. vote. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Okay. And let's put a caveat on this. That we, let's make sure we're checking everybody that's bringing oil there. I want to have to make sure they got a dump sticker. Yes. Um, they're not just working for somebody that wants to get rid of 50 gallons. Should we have uh, Cami update the, uh, the website with yeah. the fees? Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Yeah. And when you put a note on that, please, Cami, please. That yeah. Okay, and the last thing on the top of our transfer station, the rotten trim board. Oh, that was, I have absolutely two. One, yeah, the cost. Which one was? One, I thousand fifty. Okay, that was. Rotten trim board that quote is from Bill for okay. the trim boards and the far right corner where the kind of came off. Um, so is this part of the accident or not? Part this of is snow pile caught the corner. And this, so this is just like building a pair of point that's the way it was. Okay. And, um, we got this quote at it, and, mm -hmm. and in this other quote is the insurance quote and all the paperwork for the facts that the insurance company for the damage that was made to the contractor wrote there and it's clear $50 and it should be paid by this management. So all the rules get to check. Right. Uh, and that's a copy. Mm -hmm. I guess I have a one copy. So, so you've got a $5,000 line and it hasn't been touched yet for transfer station maintenance. Right, that's what you're talking about. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Get, get all copy of that. Okay. I think that was in the uh, My short and Island Day is going to come up as fast as you can. We've got that scheduled for July 15th, Friday, July 15th. Okay. Drug take back day is this coming Saturday, I believe. April 30th? Yeah, I got that. Uh, According to the police chief. Maybe, maybe it's April 30th. It's not this coming Saturday. Right. Okay. Yeah. And is the uh, swap shop open again? Coming in May. May. Okay. In May. May first. We'll head back. Uh -huh. Yes. We'll keep it. We'll put it in a file somewhere. Okay. And we got May first. Oh, well, it's an open session. Repairs that we're going to do to it for the open. Do we need to move to a uh, motion to accept the repair? Actually, no, because it's it's in his budget already. He's just notifying us that he's going to spend the money. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Also, we like delegated that money to him. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our next appointment is with the Conservation Commission. How you doing? Hi. How are you? Good. Well, Steve, how are you? Steve, how are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Steve, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good. Good. Uh, I'm going to talk to you in a few minutes. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was <laughs> ominous. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Hi, Tammy. So, we're coming to the close of the Lion's Lot Saga. Oh, good. <laughs> Two and a half years later. Yeah. So, the closing is scheduled for April 14th. Okay. So, Mr. Sager needs the check from the town by April 11th at the latest. 
so that he can have the funds in his account for disbursement. And did he tell you the amount? He would. He re is requesting the full sixty thousand. Okay. And then what he will do is after the closing, he'll refund the balance uh, to the town. Right. And he feels it will be pretty significant. What's the date you need to buy? April eleventh. Okay, and that is what is the, today's the fourth, right? Yeah, so it's next Monday. So we should if we can have the check on Friday. We can sign it up. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Let the county know. And then I've already uh, reached out to Jack. Uh, he's going to cut the check out of the uh, conservation fund for the twenty thousand, and the land bank is going to send the, their portion of the check as well to reach the hundred thousand dollar mark. Mm -hmm. And anything that's left is going to go back to the town, not to any of the other parties. Right. So pay the taxes. Pay the taxes. <laughs> well, <laughs> plus whatever <laughs> left will go to her, you know, and the love it's and that whole mess. Right. So he's finalizing the deed now, and I guess that must be a challenge working with three different attorneys to get the wording right on the yeah. on the deed. But the exciting news is is that on the fourteenth to close. The only caveat to the whole thing is that we realized this weekend that we haven't had the public hearing to spend the Conservation Commission funds, uh, which we'll do on our April 18th meeting. And then Jack said he'll have the check already then, and I already checked with Rick Sager, mm -hmm. and he's okay with that. All right. Now, <coughs> excuse me. We will have the meeting. Is your regular meeting now is on April 18th, so that's you're going to meet on the third Monday of every month. That's what it is. Yes. Okay. Good. I need to know that because when we moved our schedule up, it was the first they conflict. But I shall be available. I'm hoping for the rest of my life. <laughs> Thank you. We don't need to that one guy. Just <laughs> okay. <laughs> just as long as you're selected. Yep. So yeah. So it's the third Monday of every month. Right, third Monday. Good. Yeah. Good. Yep. Six o'clock in the townhouse. Where are that? Six. Six thirty. I'm sorry. I'm okay. there at six o'clock. Six thirty. Uh, also, I noticed. Uh, you know, Cammy sent me that note about um, the geology work that's being done in the town of Tufta Road, uh, which we were aware of. And I don't know if Cammy told you, but on the 18th, that same meeting, the state geologist and John Brooks is going to be at. The Conservation Commission meeting to explain what they're doing and show what they've already done. So if you guys are interested, I'll be here. Be there, but, uh, it's pretty interesting to us, though, the whole geology part. No doubt. Of it, so, no doubt. and John Brooks is actually a, a personal acquaintance. So uh, that's how I was able to wrangle the state geologist and him to come. What time is it going to be? Six thirty, and we usually have the guest first. We open the meeting and accept our minutes, and then we have the guests so that people want to leave. Eh? And where is it? Townhouse 10 there. Yeah. So just don't forget to notice it if you're going to go up. Right, because it'll be two of us. Right, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Although I don't see how that works, truly, but we're not making any decisions as selectmen. We're doing nothing. He's going as I just observers. I Holy Stockman and I were selecting together. Mm -hmm. I used to go to the greenhouse to buy stuff that somebody bitched about. I said, we're just going to make a motion. <laughs> we're in session all the time. All the time. <laughs> that works. Well, that if, it's, work. if it's going to be a problem, I'll just wait for your report. Okay. And it, it, it isn't really a problem. It's just that you got to let the camping know you're both going to be there. And she just puts it on the <coughs> website. It's, not, it's just noticing. Edit. But do what you need to do, Bob. And the other thing that we're working on is coming to a, a close as well is we're looking at an easement on the bean land, 35 acres, that is adjacent to Great Meadow. Um, okay. And Mr. Sager is drawing up a PNS for that now. Um, with no cost to the town. It's all going to be paid for with grant money. So it's an easement or a purchase? An easement. Okay. So yeah. Don't have to worry about it. Yeah, right. We're purchasing the easement. We're purchasing the easement. Right, but you're not purchasing the land. Right. Be simple. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. No. But just giving you a heads up on that one. So hopefully that will be finished by the end of the year as well. So that will be another 35 acres into the conservation of the Great Meadows. Great. Yep. Yeah. Cool. 
Any news on Nineteen Mile Brook? Is it come the testing starting again? <coughs> testing will be starting again in May. Um, we did have a meeting with FP Environmental. Of course, you know they're not going to give the full report until the end of the three-year cycle because they need that. Um, last year was kind of a actually uh, last year was kind of a good year. We learned a couple things. Uh, one thing that we learned is that the split samples from taking the split samples with both F and B and Woodward and Curran, who is um, Wolfboro's uh, people they're using to do theirs, isn't going to work because of the way that Woodward and Curran doing their testing doesn't bring it down to the low level that FB Environmental and UNH Labs bring to the testing. So we get a lot of <coughs> less than whatever that number is. Right. And we're going down much lower than that. So it's, we can't match the two. Um, but last year was kind of an unusual year because Wolfboro was not using the RIV at all because they were doing all that construction work up there. So they weren't using the RIV. I feel that we got a good year for doing that first year because we got a good baseline without them pumping all that water into 19 Mile Brook. Right. So now this year they're going to go up to, they're going to start with 250,000 gallons <coughs> a day then go up to their permit limit of 300,000 gallons a day. So we're still going to do the split sampling um, only because Larry Gill that uh, is kind of fronting the project for us felt it would be better to do that with the full volume of the water coming through there. So we're going to do the split sampling again, even though we can't do the comparison with Woodward and Curran. But nothing significant. Everything is pretty much on on level with what it's been in the past. There's nothing that well, we've done. Using that they haven't been exactly, which to me is a good thing because now we've got a nice base level to go by. So if things start spiking up because they're pumping water and they won't see it. Are you aware of the trail system they're talking about putting up there? No. Okay, so we got a notification that, and I don't think it was an official notification of the town of Dr. I'm sure it wasn't. It was notification through whatever that Wolfboro Parks and Rec was going to put a, a trail system up there. So I just want to make sure we keep an eye on what happens in Tuftaburra. Yeah, well, honestly, when we first started walking up there with Dave Ford, his vision was to make that kind of a, a park that people could go in there and walk around. And uh, I've always wanted to walk around a cesspool. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you stay away from the RIV, it's actually pretty nice uh, in there. You know, by the brook and stuff like that. But yeah. that's why they, you know, they're cleaning it up. But I'll send a letter off to Dave and ask to be informed of anything that they do in there. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Keep on top of it. I'm going to their meeting. Yeah. So, two weeks. Same as ours. I know. We have this and conference all the time. Yeah. All right. Next week. Next week. Okay. Anything else for our conservation plans? And that's it. We'll see you guys on the 18th. All right. Thanks Sounds perfect. Ahead. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, forest plans. Can we talk about that briefly? You can. Forest plan. Uh, when we picked up the Sergeant Phelps area, we went to the planning board to consult. And uh, uh, they had the idea that uh, we should be looking at a way to pay the town back for the lack of lack of taxes by managing timber. This is on the Great Meadow property. Yes. Okay. No. no. Well, that's well, the Sergeant Phelps, right? It's the north end between all of which was in current use. So the amount of money that you need to pay us back is in the hundreds of dollars. Yes, I tried to. But, uh, somebody wasn't listening. But eventually, Matt. Uh, donated the funds to write the four write forest plans on four properties, so it's it's a free trip. Well, it's a free trip in one regard. We don't have to pay for the plan. It's not a free trip in that he doesn't make policy decisions. He's a he's a chairman yeah. of the planning board. Right. right. It's just we'll a, decide what we're going to do with the property. Yep. Yeah, it'll just be a plan. But that's that's why we're going to do a the tour of the four lots with the yeah. forester. 
give you guys and anybody wants to come, else wants to come in, ask questions. So he's only proposing forest management on three of them. I want a 20 mile bay where the, uh, the trail is down there. Uh, he doesn't, he thinks that's, the soil is too difficult and there isn't a lot worth doing. So he's not proposing anything there. I, I think the most interesting one, one will be the, uh, the Gould lot behind the fire station. And, and that's a place where uh, uh, Rec Committee, they kind of sponsor that trail there and uh, they've talked about doing a bike trail. Right, this is a group that's working on grant funding for a mountain bike trail. So there would be a way of putting those two projects together where people might not want to do it. Two of Two, which two projects? The two trails? To, to manage the forest okay. for income. Yeah. And, and, build, and, and then design the skid trails and any temporary roads they put in to later be able to uh, be turned into like a bike trail. So all that could be fun to talk about. Sure. So you guys are going to coordinate whatever forest management yeah. plan is going to happen and then you can work that I brought this up a month ago and uh, thought it was too far away and Bill thought that uh, Bob would want to uh, you know, be, be on the board and talk about when we want to do it. Right. So that's the, that's the question. When do you want to do it? Right now it's kind of wet. It's not a great time to be walking around in the woods. Isn't it up to the guy that's doing it? No, we can make him do it when we want. Whatever's good for your schedule. I mean, we're, it hasn't come before us yet, so we're just listening. I, th I think late May, early June is probably a good time before you get in the summer rush of things. Yeah. But it dries out a little bit by then, leaves are out. Could be bugs. Oh, yeah, those be bugs. Yeah. Cakes will be in full swing. Yeah. <coughs> no hint, there's always bugs. Yep. So then the other issue, what's, what's a good time to go to all four sites? Probably talking a couple hours each, that's a whole day. We could. I'm not sure I know what you're suggesting. Are you suggesting that we're going to be involved in this? Yeah. Why? Well, you would be deciding whether to We're going to decide what is presented to us as a package. I don't think we're in the business of going out and walking around in the woods. We haven't made a policy decision whether or not we want to have the timber cut on this property at all. Right. So if you guys want to bring a timber proposal to us, that's another kettle of fish. We're not going to just wander around <laughs> hypothetically looking at trees. It just doesn't make any sense, I don't think. Unless you guys want to do it. No, I'd like to see a presentation first, and if I have any questions and I want to see it, then we'll yeah, talk. Yeah, go back and go do it again. <clears throat> Well, if, I mean, let us know what the value is, what's proposed, return on investment, if they want to call it that. Give us something to look at. And I, have to, I have to disclose that I am a for retired forester, and I did this kind of work for many years. And I don't particularly agree with what he's done. I, he, I'm he in being, favor of forest management, but I would do it a different way. He being... The forest. The, the forest oh. did the work. Okay. So he's he, done, he hired to do the work. He's done some work already? Yes. There okay, so the, there's the plans a, are completed. You can go to the Conservation Commission website and read them. Okay. I, I, I recommend that you do that, if nothing else. And particularly Google Lot, which probably attract more interest from more people. Well, this people presentation, if, you, if this presentation comes forward and you disagree with the recommendation, you should write your own recommendation to submit with it. I probably would. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I don't, I agree with Bob. If, if you get questions about the methodology or the, what our plans come, come up with, then make reference to that. I mean, it's worse in the, in the world is for us to say, oh, that's a great deal. And then you come up to us six months later and say, well, it's not really all that great if you look at it this way. I mean, you're the Conservation Commission member that's representing the town on this, right? Yeah. Well, we could be. Could be. 
not really, it's, it's not on our budget, so to speak. But we would, we would be interested, we would, sure, we'd love to be consulted. Okay, so who authorized them to go out and do a timber survey? Um, who paid them? We paid them the, the, uh, the donation. Yeah. Uh, I got an estimate. Uh, he, he donated the, the funds uh, to match the estimate, and uh, I authorized the work, but I talked to the selectman first. Okay. I must have been here. And, it, and, I, I, know. and, I, and I actually asked, do you, do you want to sign the contract? Do you want me to sign? And I think you still have said that I should sign the contract. I think yeah. I remember that. Because it wasn't our deal. The old was chairman then. Yeah, but we didn't get the money. The money didn't we did, come. We did get the money. No. The money didn't come to here. No, it didn't. For us to spend. Nope. And it, so it's it not our decision. We went to, to the conservation fund, which we <coughs> have <coughs> have right. have right. the conservation fund. So if you're, you're going to take that conservation fund money and spend it, that's your deal. All right. You sign that. Okay. Because it's not our deal. I mean, well, we're going to invite anybody, any citizens from the town, or anybody who's interested in property, a butters. We're going to invite everybody to come look at it. And the forester's going to be there. Explaining his, yes. Yeah. He'll be there explaining what he put in the report. Yeah. And the forester is going to spend all day there. here. Yeah, I, I don't know what his mission statement was. Who wrote, who wrote that? Well, when, when I brought it up before, there was there was interest in, in in going to see what he did from the selection. Fine. Okay. All right, we'll look at it on the website. Thanks for all of your work. All right. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you. See you on the <laughs> Yep. Thanks, guy. Okay. The next appointment is. Steve, is it Fusco? Yep. Fusco? How do you say it? Hi. No, Steve, I am. Pronounce your last name for us, please. Fusco. 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 Maybe you've heard about this, maybe you haven't, but... Uh, yes, and uh, before we get going, I think I have to recuse myself. I'm very much too close to the perpetrators uh, of your problem, and I'm in total support of it, and I'm too biased to make any informed decision. So I'll just back out of this conversation at this time. Okay. Appreciate your honesty. At any rate, we've we're received your emails. Okay. And I, I think you and I spoke. On the phone. John Rappel, yeah. yeah. And uh, I did drive by on Sunday, maybe. And there were some people unloading motorcycles. So it's obvious, and the sign was up. So it's obvious what's what going on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's I, took good. A, I took a video and some pictures in here just of it. Sounds like you already saw it. Yeah. I drove by on the way to the dump. I saw the trailers and I saw the activity going on there. I didn't know what was going on, but I figured somebody was doing some riding. It's been a couple of years now. I mean, le le last summer I filed a police complaint um, mm -hmm. right off the bat mm -hmm. and um, recorded decibel levels. And I live right 20, m my property is 20 feet from this border right. or from that border, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was up about 120 decibels, which is wow. not uh, light. And uh, it goes on for sometimes every afternoon and all weekend from dawn to, well, not dawn, but like 10 to dusk sometimes. The dusk will range is about a OSHA standard. Right. So it's just, uh, I mean, no, it's not just me and I know it's not just John. Uh, people up on Schoolhouse Road have complained and came down and said, what's going on? So, I mean, we're talking about three quarters of a mile away. Um, and you know, according to the, your, our own statute here, um, it's how uh, prohibited. Uh, prohibited. <clears throat> right. So it's, it's it's kind of loosely worded. We haven't had a chance to talk to our attorney about it to see what sort of action we can work on that 
um, so provision of the, of the zoning. Um, and there's no, I mean, have you talked to the owner? Jim? Yes, I have. Um, so a lot of folks are apprehensive about talking to him. So oh. I, I have. And, uh, you know, it was kind of in one year out the other kind of thing. So it really didn't make an impact. Um, he was already way into building this thing, apparently. I didn't know what was actually being built. Mm -hmm. You know, they cleared, he, it's his land, he can do what he wants, but he cleared the property, I don't know how many acres at one point, and so I thought it was just logging. Um, but then it started last year and just kept going. And we couldn't even sit out on our back porch and have dinner in the summer, so. Because although, not in this particular arena, but in the eight or nine years that I've been a select member for the course of the last quarter of a century, noise problems have come up, and generally the best solution is a mutual accommodation, and that's what's happened in the past and in other areas. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether that's possible here. I mean, I guess it's well, when you look at the, a mutual accommodation, I would say that's great if somebody wants to run their chainsaw and cut their wood, because I, I certainly do that. And if anybody ever said, hey, listen, uh, please don't do that on Sunday morning, I wouldn't do it on a Sunday morning, because I would be respectful of the neighbor saying, you know, I'm bothered. But this is, uh, I wasn't home, I'm a merchant marine, so I'm not home all the time. I was kind of shocked when I was out there the other day trying to drink a beer on my deck, and I couldn't believe it, how loud it was. Um, I thought my wife was making it up. You know, exaggerating. Um, this is motorcycle engines that are racing engines that are revving up and down constantly, and there's a lot of them. And a couple other things to think about. Somebody's going to get hurt. That's just inevitable. It's I don't not a commercial me. property, correct? It's I not. No. Yeah, I have no idea what the legalities are there. I'm sure the town doesn't have to take any responsibility, but we don't. Right. But uh, I don't know if he's got waivers being signed or whatever, but this, you know, this, it appears from what we looked at a map the other day, it, look, it appears he's using um, two sets of land, his own and also Holmes, from near as I can tell. Now, Holmes probably gave him permission, I'm sure he did, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, yeah, I haven't looked at the lot. Yeah, I did, I did. We, we did. <coughs> um, I've had one neighbor, and again, this is hearsay, who doesn't want their name brought into it, who said that they were intimidated because they brought it up on Facebook, and when they did, they had people coming by their house um, at all times, revving their engines and blowing their horns to make sure they were awake, um, people that were part of this group. So she's afraid, or they're afraid, to, to come forward. Um, I'm not afraid of the guy myself, obviously, um, but um, I'll be happy to you know, try to come to an accommodation, but I don't know what that could be, or what that would look like. Yeah, I don't either, I, I mean, I. And as I said, we haven't talked to our attorney to see how, what range of enforcement is available to us. Well, I mean, you've got Lance Williams, who's probably the finest neighbor anybody could ever ask for down here on Ledge Hill Road. Uh -huh. And people were calling the police on him because he idled his truck to warm it up in the morning inside of his own barn. Well, sometimes he was outside, but even then. It's a bit extreme, the man's a business, he's got a business and he's actually got a big right. business and he's not out there with a chain. <coughs> so, I mean, right. This that is, is without precedent. That's one instance. And I was a selectman at that point in time. We didn't come down on, on NIPA for starting his truck up. We came to a mutual uh, accommodation with a neighbor who was complaining and since moved out of town. But I mean, there are other neighbors there who lived there for a long time. That's a different kettle of fish. It's in that you've got a businessman who's paying business property taxes yeah. and, and is employing yeah, people in town. The motorcycle track, obviously, it sounds like a non-profit or a not-for-profit operation, so I'm not certain. I don't know that anybody's going to admit to paying them for it, but... I don't either, I don't know. And they may not be. That's not the really the, yeah. Yeah. the issue. Well, no, it, it would be easier to manage if it were. Because yeah. now it's going to go through site plan review. There's a big it. difference between somebody riding around on their own property and maybe having a couple of friends over doing the same mm. as, as getting into a quasi-commercial venture. Right. Facebook he did pages. say to me that they used that track to practice 
for tournaments. Oh, sure they do. You know, so. or any number of things. But I mean, it, it, it sort of reminds <coughs> me of the junkyard statutes where if you're a licensed junkyard, you get to be a junkyard. If you're not, a, if you're or somebody just collects junk, you don't get to be a junkyard. And we have the opportunity at that point in time to right. enforce cleaning it up. And it's sort of, you know, the, the folks that we've had to clean up from time to time weren't in the junk business for profit. They just collected junk. This isn't a for-profit motorcycle. You mean my neighbor? <laughs> this is a for-profit uh, motorcycle track business. <laughs> he wants to be in the motorcycle track business, I guess. Yeah, I had to call the state in on that because the town would not, you were to swear by the time, the town would not take action. And the state came in and pulled out like 78 vehicles that were leaking into the ground. Yeah. There was oil stains that were deep into the, you know, and of course my water comes from that ground. Yeah. But that was ugly. At any rate. Yeah. So I, I think before we could make any sort of determination, we're gonna to have to talk to council. Um, and I, I really would stress that hopefully uh, some sort of accommodation could be had. I mean, if it's just riding from like nine o'clock in the morning until five o'clock at night or whatever seems reasonable to the two parties. One day a week on a Wednesday would be perfect. Well, so even even with your nine to five scenario, like for instance, I like to go out and sit on my deck. I mean, I think most of us now and then when they get done with their work yeah. in the yard, like to sit on the deck and have a beer. I can't. Can't be in my backyard and I can't even imagine what Steve's going through. Yeah. And then it's your son. Yeah, I have a special needs son who's autistic and he has to wear headphones. Well, okay, let's look into it and uh, see what we can come up with. Well, we wanted to bring it to your attention, I'm sure it's uh, not the first time we've had to deal with some of these issues, but... No, not at all, and, and, and you know, it's a delicate balance between free-range property usage and a little bit of control. And the reason Tupper is so special I, I'm is all for controlled certain parts of it. I agree. And I, I'm all for, you know, a person has the right to do what they want on their property, but when it affects a mile radius yeah. in your own statues. In my opinion, if it affects your next door neighbor, it doesn't matter. If it affects one person, it's, you know, it's like the homes thing that I dealt with was, you know, so nobody else could see it but me, so nobody cared. That imagine what that did when we built our house. It cost us seven hundred and fifty thousand back then. Imagine what that would do to my property value if somebody came in because he hauled them in after we built. Do you think anybody would buy my house with seventy-eight junk cars next door? Not for that kind of money. <laughs> so you, you, you're you're devaluing the properties, and, you're, and in this case, you're, this is a health issue with one hundred and twenty decibels. That's a health issue. So, all right, okay. All right, we'll have Cammy get back to you with maybe an invitation to come back in. But let us get a little more information on our end. You got it. Thanks. But I, I can tell you, we did. I did, at, you know, speak to him. Okay. Yeah. No, I, so. and, and I, I brought that up simply because it's the best way to solve problems. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I thought. I talked to my wife. You know, we talked. We said this. I said, let me go over there. I'll take. You know, broad daylight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, and I'll speak to him and, and it was just you know I could tell it didn't really go anywhere yeah so all right anything else Bob? no just we have to figure out whether it's something the county town can deal with or if it's a simple matter have you consulted an attorney uh, yeah all right let's do it one step at a time all right that's what, that's what we thought Great. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Mr. Luck, boys. Yeah, me. All right. Bye, Ken. Thanks Bye. for. You're welcome. Next item for business is a signature file. First item for signatures of. Timber tax, timber tax levy for $266.50.
two cents. Move to sign. Move Second. Move. All those in favor? Aye. He's up to the Next one is a timber tax levy for $231. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the next item is a intent to cut for, uh, I'm sorry? Intent to excavate. Oh, I'm sorry, intent to excavate for Federal Corner Road Lot of 25 acres. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And another um, attempt to excavate for... Mm, that should be a supplemental. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Think it's, um, yeah. This is a supplemental for Sandy Knoll Road. Move to approve. I'll Second. Say, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And travel tax levy for $337.66. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 For the same lot, just if you're checking. Mm -hmm. And a travel tax levy for $9.76. <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Tell you, we get towns getting rich on gravel. That is pretty much the honor system, although we, we have, from time to time, sent uh, uh, professional out to do to, to a survey of the grade. I mean, can, we can go through that exercise. Generally speaking, it's the honor Not for nine dollars. <laughs> oh, that's the one I'd send out. <laughs> yeah, that. right. Um, okay. Correspondence. Action. Human action. action first. Reactions. The gray, the gray folder. Okay. That's Actions. Okay, we have a letter from Lauren Berman Lefebvre, the Hope House Family Shelter in Wolfboro, and that is an invitation to their whatever it's doodle pool, whatever that is. Um, it's actually a, an invitation to look at the services that they provide in the facility they have on April 29th. Um, so if anybody would like to go and I've got a forwarded message from Jeffrey MacGyver. Is his name really MacGyver? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is he that good? <laughs> um, about the Carroll County Broadband Committee meeting. Um, he works for Consolidated Communications. Well, <clears throat> yeah, we just, I met, I met him at the meeting a few weeks ago. And, uh, him and he and his partner, uh, I don't remember, I don't remember her name, but uh, they want our business. Uh, of course they do. And in light of the letter that we just sent off to New Hampshire Co-op, I thought it would be at least respectful to at least respond to them in some fashion. That's all. 
Yeah, I, I don't have a problem talking with, with anybody, actually. But, but my understanding is their current financial deal that they've had with a, a corporation in Illinois, I believe, we don't qualify as a good community for that deal. They, they want um, more compact urban settings like mm -hmm. Conway or Oldsboro or whatever. I mean, they have yet to stretch their lines into King of Valley. Are they going to do that? Uh, so, I'm just, and I'm not asking. <laughs> that was a rhetorical question. Okay. Right. I, I don't mind having them come in. I just don't want to think of them coming in for a cakewalk from my end. I don't know where. Well, guys well I them. think we should, we should, uh, Explore every avenue that will get everyone in town service, meaning everyone, right. just like they did in Sandwich with the co-op. Right. Sandwich did not take Adelphia or whoever it was in the beginning because they wouldn't service everyone in town. Right. And they've just now, 20 or 30 some odd years later, finally got it through the co-op. And uh, we need assurances, no matter who does it, that we get everyone in town. That's been our goal, eh? That's one of our goals. Yeah, and so far the co-op seems yeah. to be the one. Well, that's actually in their in their bylaws, so yep. they don't have any choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it, if you want to reach out and set up a meeting, that's fine with me. You can come in and see us all. Okay. We'll hear them out. Do what we got to do. I got a letter from Life Ministries, which is one of the. Nonprofits that we support on an annual basis. They received our $3,000 payment. Mm -hmm. And this is a uh, description of their services and how many meals they've provided or um, are providing. Vegetation, not, not, oh, you did say vegetation. Just, <laughs> Sometimes I get things right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Vegetation control. So that's maps of, and this should be made public for anybody that wants it. I don't know if uh, the co op put this online, but this is a description of all of the uh, vegetation control services that are going to happen. This is chemically removing plant product. Agent Orange. So that's not not. I didn't mean that. That's a joke. No service Bad joke. Use notification is what this is. It's. Um, but they're going to defoliate. They are, in fact, going to do that. Uh, short of any public protest. And that's that for that. Now we're going to correspondence. Um, I've got an email about the. Um, soil survey that's going to be happening this this spring, and I guess for whoever watches this on whatever channel it's on, there will be a man by the name of Dr. John Brooks. He's going to be traveling the town in his private vehicle, working on a uh, geological survey of the town of Tuftonboro for its surface mineral deposits, etc. So that's who he is. The Board of Adjustment uh, is having a hearing on April 12th at the townhouse for the Leonard Pino Revoc Revocable Trust for a variance considering Article 4.2. Wants to build a storage barn within setbacks on County Road. The Humane Society also sent us a thank you letter for the $500 we gave them. And the Executive Council, through its Executive Council, can sent us a description of what they did, a little of what they did. And we have a letter from, um, I don't know if any of you read this. This is from a citizen. I am responding to the abatement decision made by Rod Wood 
from the assessor's office. Mr. Wood's recommendation to deny my abatement application has been made without an on-site evaluation, which I feel is important and necessary in order to clear up incorrect tax card descriptions of my three quarter acre lots, my three one quarter acre lots that are on the Melbourne River. Mr. Wood agrees that Riverfront does not significantly add value to the property, yet he adds a certain criteria that a Riverfront property that affords access to a body of water possibly could have elevated the property's value. My contention is that my properties have been assessed significantly higher than surrounding properties, for example, Oak Dam Pond. However, I'm not going to get into those details because I don't think it's proper. I would like the opportunity to discuss these, these disproportionate evaluations. I do feel an on-site visit will clarify and support my abatement application. So I don't know, I don't remember this abatement application coming in. Did we were Last week. Oh, is that the one we rejected? Yeah. I thought that was some other one. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that was Maps. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was the Marina. Oh, then it was the week before. Okay. So it's been rejected. Can I see that for a moment? Sure. And Rob talked to him today. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he does, it's not that he doesn't have um, remedy. He just doesn't have it here. We've made a decision if he wants to go to Superior Court, that's his next step. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we could talk to him a lot about it, but I thought we did talk to him at one point about his abatement process. Yeah. I think if people want to abate their taxes, they need to provide some supporting documentation other than a realtor right. uh, to support their claim. Right. Perhaps an independent appraisal. Well, there are, yeah, there are ways to do it. And if they do go to court over this, they're going to have to because they have to present a case. Mm -hmm. So, and they're asking three non-professional assessors, although our elected position makes us the town assessors, we hire that service, right. a professional to do that service. Right. And we take the advice of our professional assessor to heart. And we've questioned him any number of times on his procedure. I remember on the one or two ago that we took him to task for a couple of weeks on that one right. to try to solidify why we were going to deny it. So we don't just... Right. I know of an assessment that happened where a former selectman went up and looked at the property and the fellow was so obviously right, it seemed to be a paperwork mistake. But it was taken care of. and. and he mentions the, the idea that having riverfront property that would afford access to the lake might actually make it more valuable. But Mill Pond Drive isn't going to access any lakes unless you're going to jump over the dam in your boat. It's right. not going to work. I mean, it's, the problem I find with that particular reference mm -hmm. is that in the course of a colloquy, of a conversation, you might bring something up. It might not have any pertinence to this particular piece of property, right. other than the fact that a piece of property is on a river, but has access to the lake. Right. That's going to, in, in order its benefit, it doesn't mean that this. It does, yeah, that it doesn't, one doesn't seem to work. Just because you say the words, it all of a sudden becomes yeah. testimony. Anyway, yeah, and we've we've denied the application for an abatement. And so his next step is, he can file again next year if he wants to wait till next year. Or he can go to Superior Court and take us to task. Do we, do we need to somehow notify him of our... No. Okay. We notify him. This is his protest. We, it's not going to go back and forth. There, I, there wasn't a request. No. He didn't ask to be reheard or anything. No, he wants to have Rod come out and take a look. And I think... He's going to find that Rod is going to go down there and take a look because the whole town is getting reevaluated this year. Right. So. Okay. All right. Select those updates. I was at no meetings last week. Okay. Nothing to update. Uh, I, I did not receive a quote yet for uh, the dry agent system. So 
So I was hoping to have that back today. Has arrived. Can't think of anything that came along that was truly uh, important enough to report on. General conversations with people, a couple of questions that were easily answered. I have a question about uh, something that uh, that I signed. We'll um, have to do that in non public. Uh, that was my next question. Okay. That was my next question. Uh, is, we should, is it important <clears throat> to have non public to discuss something? Yes, We're going to have a non public to discuss employee. Right. Right now. Okay. As soon as you're done. Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Any other business? Any other no. public input? Not here. Okay. I'm going to move that we go into uh, non public RSA 91 A, colon 3, comma, Roman numeral 2, parent A, personnel. All be yes. Mike, yes. Murray, yes. Okay, thank you. Short break from that. No, no, thank you. Make my letter.